Hey, what's up? Mondo Fresco here. I'm Brianna. This is episode nine yeah. now of Off the Air. What's up, Bri? What's up? I can't believe it's episode nine. It's my favorite number. Yeah, I know. Do you know why? Wait, what did you say? <laughs> I just told you. Like, <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. You ago. said because it's closer to ten, and you still have time. It's like close to perfection, but you still you're still not perfect. <laughs> There's always room for <laughs> always room for improvement. improvement. Oh, I like it. I like it. You know what I'm saying? And my favorite number is 27 because because of her birthday. Oh wow, yeah. It's That's cute. That's really That's cute. cute. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyways, how's your week going? How's life? Pretty good. Pretty good. Anything um, new? I. Uh, I am starting to post more on Instagram stories. Uh, but that's a lie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Inspired by you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I, but I just feel really like it's, it's a lot of pressure mm. to, to post. Mm. And I know you and I had a conversation about this prior. Several. Several. And uh, <laughs> back in the day, IG was just posting your food. It was yeah. posting your shoes. It was just random things and throw like a, a filter on that and, and call yeah. it a day. Not like, honestly, I feel like in the beginning on Instagram, when people posted themselves, it was kind of weird. Mm. Like, I don't, I don't, I didn't really remember seeing that too much. I thought it was like more of like a hip, not hippie, but like a more of a like, like a you, you were like a photographer yeah type yeah of thing, yeah right kind of kind of vibe so i was like not into it you know and then now it's like you gotta be an ig model and you gotta make sure your hair is nice and you're not wearing the same clothes and i can't wear these jeans that weren't too post to go you know so i just <laughs> <laughs> feel like it's it's a struggle when it comes to like figuring out when to post where it, like I need a cool like scene in the mm -hmm. background. And I think what I've been struggling with on Instagram is um, trying to get enough where people understand me based on the feed because at this point, people use Instagram as like your resume. Mm -hmm. You know, like what is it that she does? Well, she works at a radio station, clearly. She loves fashion, she does some hosting, she has a podcast. And you gotta make sure that the aesthetic, you can see that just based on jumping on the page for the first time. Mm -hmm. So I think like trying to strategize all of that and be very strategic is so important to the point where like you got to pre -plan, like pre plan your posts and it's like who wants to do that? It is a lot of work. <laughs> you got to hire an, like an assistant honestly to do that which who has the time or money to do that right now like unless you're like Beyonce or something. What would you say is is the toughest or you find the most pressure when it comes to social media? I feel like for me, like my main focus and maybe just cause more my demo is like Instagram. I tweet here and there, um, Facebook's for the fam, Pinterest, whatever. Like I think for me, it's just more so making sure that my feed is clean, you know, mm -hmm. like the colors match and the aesthetic is appealing and I'm doing enough and I'm posting in real time and making sure it's, you know, a swipe up here or authentic. I don't want it to come across like I'm always happy because that's just not the real world. Right, right. And I don't feel like people can relate to me if they just see every post you know, super exciting and super happy because our last podcast or the past two, actually, I feel like we've been very vulnerable and transparent, right. which for me is like, oh, my God, like, I can't believe we actually did that when right. I saw it again. And I'm like, do I post this? Like, I really thought it through and I still I posted it on my story because I'm like, OK, it will go away. But on my feed, I'm just I don't know, like you know, people are going to actually get to know the real authentic version of who Brianna is, yeah. you know, and you sometimes you just think that just think too deep and you just end up not doing it, you know? Yeah, I feel like on, on social and especially on Instagram, we all want to seem picture perfect. Yeah, you know, and it, but life isn't that. And no. I, I feel like that's why I love this this podcast so much, because we get to be a little more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. uh, we get to to open up, and um, you know, I I, I want to do more of that on on social media. To be honest with you, like I want to, like I love that we do it on this podcast. But I feel like if if we talk about um, 
you know, our, our fears that we talk about, like, you know, we talked about anxiety, what mm -hmm. stresses us out, what we do when we were overwhelmed. I mean, I feel like that humanizes us. Yeah. And because we are human at the end of the day. Right. We're, I mean, really? it's, we're not just we're <laughs> yeah. not just, you know, someone that that they see on on, on Instagram mm -hmm. or on the radio or on TV or, you know, whatever it is that, that we do. It's 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 I, I think we have to be open and um uh, I think this is what I think of, of, of even more so when it comes to women. I feel like women need to care less about, and I know I'm going to get a lot of ish about this, but like care less about like makeup and hair mm. and all that because, I mean, you guys are beautiful like without it. And, and even when we, I've had this conversation with friends and it's like, hey, you don't, you don't need the, the lashes all the time. You don't need the makeup all the time. You don't have, like you're beautiful the way you are. And it's like, no, you're tripping. Like I, yeah. and, and they get, they well, get mad I, at, at me and I'm like, no, like mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like, you know, someone like Cardi B, for example, she'll go on live live just, just the, like she just yeah. woke she just woke up <laughs> seriously um but that's why people love her mm -hmm. because you know she's she's just like being herself real. whether they hate or not they're still talking about her um but it's like i think because that's not the norm as women like I, I, I come dressed every single day. And, and you, <laughs> you do a great job at it. Thank like you. you. You I mean, look, I'm, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus here, but I've, for my years in radio, um, you know, in radio, you don't, <laughs> you don't see us all the time. You know what I'm saying? Right. Unless you're, you're posting on, on IG all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but even like years past, when social wasn't as big, people would be showing up in their PJs, That's you know, and people nuts. still show up in their PJs. Yeah. But the fact that you, Brianna, <laughs> like wake up early in the morning, you work out and then you come dress like <laughs> to impress every day. I mean, major props to you. Thank and, you. And uh, it says a lot about you. It says a lot about how much you care about your brand, too. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I'm like, do I care too much, you know? But like for, I honestly do it for me because I dress how I want to be perceived. So right. I come camera ready because I want to be on TV and I mm -hmm. will be on TV. Right. So I dress the part as if I'm about to go on KTLA mm -hmm. and do the entertainment segment. Right. And so if I don't and I come bummy and I've had my days right. where like I've wore like my gym shark or just like a workout outfit, I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's a mental thing, mm -hmm. but I'm not as clean sharp. and sharp on yeah. air if I were to dress up and wear heels. Cause I don't sit down. I don't know if you, I don't mm -hmm. know if you ever watched me on air, but I never sit down while I'm talking and I'm standing in heels for five hours during my show. And it's like, you just, you know, you just gotta, you gotta play that part right yeah. now. And that just goes back to like, you gotta make sure that even if you do wear the same things, you kind of change it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, of course. And like, I've gotten to the point where now I just have like my basic clothes. Like I've really been, my boyfriend's very minimal. So like he kind of taught me how to be that way, but still like keep it classy and look mm -hmm. aesthetically pleasing yeah. and kind of go with what I'm trying to do or whatever, as far as like my brand and how I want my page to look. But I do think sometimes like, man, are they going to notice that those are the same jeans I wore last week, you know? Yeah. Um, just because that's what everybody. <laughs> we're not. I'm telling you right now, we're you not going to notice. But I will get like, I just, I feel like certain people do. Yeah. Like, but like, think know. about it. Think about the certain people, right? Yeah. Let's just say it's like five people. Right. Out of the thousand that follow you. Like. It, it doesn't matter. I remember, I, this is, I remember there was a time when I would post mm -hmm. and I would like second guess myself. Like I would want to tweet something, but then I would think, oh man, but if this person sees it, they're going to be talking a <laughs> bunch of shit, you know? Right. But think about that. Like I was worried about one person when thousands of people are following mm -hmm. us. Um, you got to get the message across. Uh, and th that message being whatever you want, whatever it is, like it doesn't matter if if Joe Schmo or you know Jane Doe, uh, <laughs> it, you know, is gonna talk shit. Like who cares? Someone always like what you said mm -hmm. about Cardi. Like people are always gonna talk shit. Um, that's how serious I am. I'm cussing. I never really cuss. I know. Um, mm -hmm. But people will always, uh, you know, talk regardless. And I feel like you just got to do the the best you possibly can. And you know, when it comes to 
um, like outfits, mm -hmm. I feel like uh, you do a great job and you shouldn't overthink it. Um, like for me, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm definitely mindful of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really wear the same thing within like a 16 photo radius See, on Instagram. You still think about it. But it, it's more so, it's more so, like you said, it's, it's, it's about branding um and, and and things like that i mean I, I for example my my favorite sneakers are the air jordan ones uh -huh. are the chicago ones right and uh, i have a few pair of the pairs of those pairs shout out to all the pairs um no <laughs> little rick ross uh no anyway um, I, have a, <laughs> I have i have a few pairs of, of the chicago ones and i wear them all the time um and that i don't overthink like i'm not i'm not thinking uh, oh man, they're gonna. Those shoes gonna are different. Same, you know, they're gonna see me with the same shoes. You think shoes are different? See, and then we go into that. Shoes are different. Shoes are different. If you're wearing the same like shirt that's a graphic tee, like people are gonna be like, oh, that's the same. But like shoes, it's like, I don't know. Is, is it not? I don't think so. I mean, I think it's. I mean, this is there's a thing. Like, we, sh we you know, I, I'm for trying your best to like switch it up, right? Right. But like everyone has different types of, of wardrobes and different types of of lifestyle so don't overthink it uh, at the end of the day i don't think i overthink it i'm just like I'll, I'll look at my feet and say okay i wore this jacket you know a week ago or two weeks ago i mm -hmm. shouldn't wear it again because i don't want it to be like you know right next to but, uh, that same photo but <laughs> it's 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 it, i don't think it's that deep well if you do overthink and you want to make your page look more aesthetically pleasing to your eye or whoever's eye you're searching for. You could use the Preview app. This is not sponsored. <laughs> Preview app is like really great to just kind of move around your photos right. so you can kind of see. If you are overthinkers like myself and Mondo because he will not post photos right away. He waits True. till a month later, but that's another conversation for another day. Wait, you know what? That reminds <laughs> me of, of uh, I had a conversation with a friend and they were telling me, uh, when should when should you let go of a piece of content you know like i'm a perfectionist and i let do, go as far as like post or let go as like don't post like it. like post it like okay. just 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 let it go and post it um i feel like there are uh <laughs> times when i'm just see when it comes to content and quality mm -hmm. of content that i'm very picky on and right and and I, I do become a perfectionist but at the same time you there has to be a point where you just have to let things go based yeah. based on on uh based on on um if some if something is is timely like i don't know let's say we're doing a a, a, a you know uh pop smoke just recently passed mm -hmm. if we're doing something on like for example a piece on pop smoke mm -hmm. it has to go out fast mm -hmm. and we can't overthink those type of posts like if it's right. a timely post you just gotta like get it as good as possible and send it out you don't have to like tighten up every little it. thing yeah. um and I, I feel like that's 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 an art within itself too mm -hmm. just like getting it ready and sending it out yeah instead of like overthinking and yeah. being a perfectionist you can't be a perfectionist all the time i've realized yeah, that you can especially with this day and age people's attention span they're only going to check it out one time and it goes and it comes it's like mm -hmm. you know yeah. it is what it is but. so um someone the other day asked me uh when it came to networking like how important or how do you network mm. how do you personally go about this is just as as simple as exchanging info you know i honestly wouldn't be where i am today if i didn't network i think it's so important to just like put yourself out there mm -hmm. and for me, like just I'm such a people's person and just starting a conversation. Um, how was your day? Like, you know, even compliments like that could you start never compliment a network. Me. Um, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I do. I think your hair is cool. Thanks. Anyways, <laughs> so it's just important to, to reach out to people and to like for me, my mentors that I have currently, I kind of sought out like, okay, who, who do I look up to? And um, I want to be like this person. This is how I kind of envision a piece of my life going in this direction. So I, the universe, I feel like kind of brings the right people around. Mm -hmm. If you kind of 
have an idea of where you want to go in your career. So you reach out. I mean, now it's easier than ever because social media, people are so accessible. People, everybody checks their DMs for the most part. Right. And even if that's not the case, LinkedIn, um, email, asking people to get coffee. I was listening to a podcast on the way here and they were talking about bringing food to people because people, people love two things. It's money and it's food. And like, if you say, Hey, I would love to bring you donuts one day. I'm sure they'll let you in and say like, all right, let's sit down and have a conversation. I'm sure you would, if I said right. you want some donuts, Mondo. Yeah. Come on by the hub. Waves. <laughs> I'm more of a, a sushi eater myself. Okay. I mean. Well, you know, next time I'll know, I'll note that. Um, but I feel like that's so important to network because if you don't have that foundation and that that tribe um, behind you, you know, it takes a village. You right. can't just get to the top on your own. You know, you have a team of people here. Um, I was just saying earlier, it is all guys right now. I'm the only girl here. <laughs> right. It's, it's uh, we have a team of, of fellas. Fellas, that always hold team. it down. I'm just messing with you. But yeah, if you don't network and you don't have good relationships with people, how can you be successful? Right. I'm sure we've all heard it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah, it is. Right? Especially and in LA. I feel like it's a little bit of both, though. You know, I feel like you have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. um, but it has a lot to do with, with who you know as well. Like, those connections have to be have to be made. Um, How do you network, would you say? I don't know. I, I, th I think at, at the most simplest form, um, when, I, when I meet someone, um, I, I don't carry business cards with me because I... I have. You I want their number right away. Yeah. I, 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 no, no. I, I, I just think business cards are a little dated, to be honest with you. That's, that's my. Really? Yeah. Mm. That's, that's my perspective. Here, here's my business card. Business cards are often, you know, I, for example, I'll put them in my pocket. Sometimes I lose them mm -hmm. off the back. And I'm like, oh, hey, uh, how do I get in contact with this guy? I didn't take a picture of, the photo of, of his card or whatever. <laughs> um, but so I always just say, just grab my email or get my number. Um, from the get-go. I mean, I feel like, you know, hmm. business cards are a little outdated. Yeah. Um, so right away I'll say, hey, you know, yeah, let me let me get your info or here, shoot me um, shoot me your email address. Text me I your email like address. I feel like a lot of people say, what's your Instagram? That's good too. Yeah, I went to this event and everybody there was like in the industry. We were like, what's your Instagram? I'm like, okay, everybody, this is how we're talking to each other. And I feel like, like now... That? No, because you're not getting to know me. You're getting to know my feed. And that's where we go back to like earlier conversation. It's like, get to know me for me. Like the end of the day, as much as authentic I want my Instagram to be, it's not fully who Brianna is, you mm -hmm. know? And it's like, you'll never get to really know a person unless you sit down and have a conversation, get a cup of coffee or email, you know? Like, right. you can't have a conversation based on looking at how many people follow me and how many, my algorithm, all, you know, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like, mm hmm I don't, I don't really think that that's a great way to communicate is Instagram. When yeah. you slide in my DMs and... We'll talk there. Like it's yeah. it's a little funky that way. Yeah. No, I, I I I get it. Like here, what's what's your Instagram? <laughs> I feel like that's easier to some people mm -hmm. than to ask for a phone number, right? Like, hey, yeah. what's what's your IG? Oh yeah, it's Brianna. Boom boom boom. All right, cool. I'm gonna follow you. <laughs> Obviously, that's you're fishing for a follow. Yeah. I'll, you know. So, right. oh, okay, cool. I just followed you. Yeah. That's like, hey, wink wink. Follow me back. <laughs> Um, and sometimes you do it like I do. I, I feel like I, I, I fall into that trap of like, hey, I just followed you. And I'm like, OK, all right. Waiting for that I'll, follow. I'll follow you, too, <laughs> I guess. Um, but yeah, what I do is just I'll say, hey, here, shoot me your email. Here's my number. Mm -hmm. And right away, obviously, they text you um, and you have their phone number and, and their email address. The, yeah. the most important part, even more important than networking is the follow, follow up. up. That's the major key. If you don't follow up, that entire thing it is just, just a, waste. a waste. And and it happens sometimes mm -hmm. too. I mean, I'm guilty of it sometimes too. Like I'll get someone's information and I, f I just forget to follow up. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I'll remember months later and I'm like, all right, I'll, I'm going to email this person. And <laughs> months I'm later, Mondo, what the <laughs> heck? <laughs> it, ha it happens, Brie. Remember happens. that time we said we were going to get some coffee? Like, <laughs> it happens. Obviously, I mean, you know, they'll say, oh, yeah, we got we to gotta do it. We got to get together. But obviously, you got to do it when it's fresh, mm -hmm. you know? Um, even the next day, hey, it was great seeing you. It was great to, to meet you. Right. Um, that follow-up is, is, is key.
Yeah, it is. So follow up. That's how you make friends and that's how you build relationships and, and a team. A team. It's so important. What is your secret to building your team? Mm. My secret? I feel like it's not really a secret. I think it's just being nice to others and treating them how you want to be treated. Um, like for me, I have my interns and I just, you know, I'm their mentor. Um, I'm their like big sis, you know, and it's like it's important to be a family more than anything. You know, there's sometimes there's things that are out of our control, out of our control. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, one thing I can control is the energy in the room. And with my interns, it's like, I want us, I want you to know that you're just as important as I am. You're a significant piece to this puzzle. Mm -hmm. And no matter what, we are here together. And I, re I repeat that, you know, every single day when we come in. We even do 3D breaths before the show because I want to make sure we leave it at the door, whatever, you know, we're going through. And like, you just want your team to be on the same level. You never want them to think like you're the boss. You know, because it's like we all contribute to this. Just because I'm on the mic doesn't mean, you know, that your your part is just whatever. You know what I mean? Like you're the intern. I want us all to be a team. So I think the importance of that is just making sure we're all equal members. Yeah, you I know? agree. I agree. Um, I feel like you're the exact same way. Like we talked about this before. Yeah, you know? I, I, I think the the most important thing about building your team is is you have to be in the same frequency mm. um and I, I i think that's a very important question how do you build a team i mean for someone who um has done everything on their own their entire lives you know in, in their career mm -hmm. um that was me for a long time and 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 partly because i felt like only i can do so the, much and it was only I can do things the way that I like to. Right. I was very like, I could do it on my own. I'm a one man team. I got this. Yep. I can I can do it all. Yeah. But man, there's there there comes a point where you're gonna hit that wall, and you need to expand and build a team. And yeah. again, like I feel like number one is you have to be on the same frequency. Mm -hmm. um, and you ha yeah, you have to have like like-minded individuals and it's part of like networking and, um, yep. and building relationships. And, and, and like you said, it's not, it's not a I am the boss mentality. When right. you have that mentality, sure, you'll, you'll get a few people that will join you on your journey, but for a short amount of time. But they're not gonna love you the way you want them to because you're, you come in with that arrogance or you know that that persona and it's like for me it's so important to be fair like I you know I think it's especially in the beginning of my career I was like a woman show this is on right. me but when I started to develop the team I wanted to make sure the relationships were authentic and not forced and like now I take my feelings away from it it's like you executed that wrong on air but like let's figure out how we could fix it and my approach is so important so like I used to get upset. Oh, why did you do it this way? But it's like, then people are not going to like you right. because of your approach, yeah. you know? Like, I don't want to be, let's be honest, the mad black woman. Like, that's not how I want to be per perceived. So, like, for me, first and foremost, are you okay? Yeah. You know, like, how is your energy? Like, how is your day? Like, are you going through things? And sometimes it could be as simple as that, and they are. You know, I'm sorry, Brianna, I'm just going through it today. Well, what can I do to help? You know, mm -hmm. like, just making sure that you are there for them, you know, as they are there for you, just so that they love it just as much as you do, you know? So I'll be there for you. I was like, I know he's about to say something super corny right now. <laughs> I love friends. What? Um, oh, one thing dear. that's important, Brianna, um, that you mentioned, and, and just to like echo is, uh, when someone joins my team, I join theirs. theirs and that's the way that you build a strong team and you have to mean it. You have to feel it. You have to really believe it. Yeah. You can't just tell people, Hey, Hey, if you know, you join my team, I join yours. And you have to right. have that mentality because people will sense that people mm -hmm. will know um when and, and i mean that like when someone joins uh, joins my team i want them to know uh that i 
I, I, I ask them what their goal is. I ask, I ask them what they want to do with their lives. I do the same thing. And, and <laughs> then their goals become mm -hmm. mine as well mm -hmm. because I want to see their goals become reality. So if there's an opportunity, if I, if I know that, hey, I want to I wanna do uh, sports broadcasting, mm -hmm. and I know that the minute I find someone looking for a sports broadcaster, so the minute that I find an internship, the minute that I find like a paid gig, whatever it is, like I am looking out for my team because mm -hmm. I want them to, to, to win. And that's how you have to, you have to think. When you join my team, I join yours and vice versa. It can't, yeah. just, it can't just be one way. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, you're the boss, so they have to do <laughs> everything for you. It doesn't work that way. Right. Not if you want people to be as loyal, um, you have to be as loyal to them too, mm -hmm. period. I, it's so funny that you do that because I do the same thing with my interns. I'm like, in the beginning of the semester, I say, what is it that you want to learn? And we execute throughout the, the semester just to make sure we hit those bullet points on what it is that you want to do. And always remind them, my resources are yours. And mm -hmm. that's the importance of networking because you build that throughout you know the time span of your relationship you know i interned for someone <laughs> and they were horrible hu <laughs> oh, horrible no. horrible humans okay they, they were they were rude they were disrespectful i never understood that I don't, I don't either. I mean, I still don't, I don't know. I, I remember. Power trip kind of thing. Like, oh, because I can be this way. Yeah. Ego, some, you just got to push that aside. You're never going to win that way. It, I, I feel like it's such a, it's such a, a, a dated, it's an outdated mm -hmm. uh, way of thinking. Um, and no one wants to, to, to work with you that way. Mm -mm. You know, I, I remember when I was in that position, granted, it, this person would, would, wouldn't yell at me directly. It was pretty much they were being jerks to everyone around me that were also interning. And from to me, they were kind of like kind of cool, kind of. Eh, but I was <laughs> I just I just didn't like how this person functioned um, and, and, and handled their business. You know, like mm -hmm. right away, I, I knew when I make it when i become successful when i'm in a position to be on the other side mm -hmm. i will not do that and that's why that happened to you i truly believe that was the goal that came out of that is because we were able to learn luckily i didn't really experience that too much as an intern when i became an assistant um you know it's just it's important to treat people how you want to be treated right because your intern and your assistant can become your boss or your direct competitor. Yep. Now, <laughs> things, it's just very interesting the way the tables turn and how life does its thing. But the reason why certain negative, negative quote unquote things happen in your life is so that you can structure it in a way where you know that that won't happen to the next person. And that's why we're here. That's, that's why we're here, you know, to teach people not to act like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, let's talk about something that's very important to both of us, mm -hmm. which is representation in the industry. Yes. How important it is, not just for us, but for the industry. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about. It's so important. So for me, representation as just color, ethnicity, race, all those things. Um, actually, I saw a post yesterday. And I saw iHeartRadio, they posted for Black History Month all of the black on-air talent. And I was like, this is a very powerful like post because you had so many different talents. And I just love how they highlighted that. And they represented, you know, African-Americans and, and the way that they work, the way that they move, and they're legends. And I think that it's it's so important because we don't see that mm -hmm. so often. And I think even for Women's History Month and highlighting that and, um, you know, all the different months, I think that, like, it, it's challenging sometimes to see. Like, I, I sometimes I look on Instagram and I'm like, man, like, who can I relate myself to or who can I look up to? Because I feel like representation is so thin. Like, you don't you don't see it as often as you should. Right. And I think now with 2020, like, we're getting there. Mm -hmm. But it's not, 
it's not it's not there 100 right <laughs> it's not there it's definitely way better than it was in the 90s but at 2020 you would have thought like we would see it everywhere and i think it's really unfortunate because there's so many legendary people you know that i want to see all the time yeah like even with with afro latina women like i feel like i'm the only one you know like who else do you know that's in yeah. radio at least so it's like I know I have to do my due du- 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 diligence. Yeah. Due diligence. Due. Gi- why can I speak today? Jesus Christ, you say the word. Yeah, yeah, your due du- diligence. Yes, yeah. exactly. And like my part, because if I don't, then who else is gonna be able to look up for that or look at that and say like, "Ooh, I want to be just like her because mm-hmm. I look like her." You know, I think it's just like so important. And you have a lot of women in in all demographics and. In, in, in different <clears throat> ages as well, looking at you, yeah, uh, you personally, um, teen, older and teenagers younger. looking yeah. at you, mm-hmm. um, and and that the right, like that's why representation is is important, and I do feel like we're getting there. I don't think we're we're one hundred percent there yet. Um, you know, what I don't like about the industry sometimes is if we have someone uh a a minority on tv on um in media and it's like okay they're they're on but they're playing a stereotypical character Mm -hmm. um or they're bringing um stereotypical things to the table Mm. um and instead of like uplifting Mm -hmm. it's just you're degrading your own people you know what i'm saying like it's just like hey like for me i there's there's times when when I've, I I work with different brands and I work, you know and there's been times when they're like hey how about you do a <laughs> a taco camp you know do like, like a taco why? thing and I'm like oh yeah you know, I'm I'm why like, why and, and obviously I I decline that and uh, and we flip it and make it something else because mm-hmm. I want to uplift um our our people our you know our our culture. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm looking at it like that. I'm not trying to to play uh, the stereotypical card, you know. I, yeah. I love that we have more Latinos in 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 media and in entertainment. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of the times, even in you know, actors, we're playing the cholos, you know, we're playing the the maids, we're the playing slaves. the people in prison. Right. And I feel like, okay, great, we're on the screen. But, you know, we're tired of playing the thugs. Like, yeah. have us be the, the lawyers and have us be the doctors. Have us be uh, the, 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 the stars of the movie. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't have to be the, the stereotypical um, characters. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, and, and I, I feel like, I, you know, we, there's a lot of peers that, that we have in media. And um, that should be our mission mm-hmm. is to uplift each other and our culture and just do better yeah and just be us like don't do your stereotypical like you know black white it doesn't even matter at the end of the day i mean there's so many different human beings at this point and i think like as long as we stay true to who we are then we'll be successful and we'll be good but you know we're working on it. It's 2020. It's yeah. a new year. No, and, so. and, and, and and Brianna, I feel like you know you're you're a, a great role model. Thank you. Um, when it and when it comes to waving the the new wave, mm-hmm. um, uh, riding the new wave and and and, and, and t- taking things to the next level, I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. Um, you know, there's a few peers of mine that are or many peers of mine that that are are doing the same thing and. Um, and I, I just feel like we have to continue that path. Mm-hmm. Um, and and yeah, man, all the the major networks we uh, like. I love Narcos. Narcos is awesome. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a, it's based in Mexico. It's great. But like, yo, there's like a lot of those stars in those movies. Like, throw them in the, in the series. Throw them in, in in other series. I know. We 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 don't just gotta play Narcos all the time. <laughs> you know. I know. All right. Well, what we're gonna do is you write that script. Okay. I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> Get on it. Come on. This is the year. And just lastly, our last topic uh, mm-hmm. is about the sudden deaths, the unfortunate deaths. Um, you know, we just lost Pop Smoke, mm-hmm. um, Kobe, Gianna, 
um, Juice World. Juice World recently. X. Um, Nipsey great. Hustle. Yeah. It's like. How, how have these deaths, you know, unfortunate passings, how have they had an impact and, and, and what have, what, what kind of impact have, have they had in, in, in your personal life? I mean, for me, it, it just never gets easier just to say it on the air. It's very, it's very challenging. And as far as the impact goes, I mean, I, I just, every day I just try to get up and go, you know, and, and not give up. I think we go through so many personal things in our lives and it's like, man, is it really worth this argument? Like is, it's just so important to fulfill your purpose and seeing that your life can be taken away in a blink of an eye is put my life into an entire different, you know, perspective mm -hmm. and my relationships with people. And like now more than ever, just it's, it's so important. It's always been important, but it's so important um, to just be nice to people, you know, and make sure that you're doing something every single day for yourself mm -hmm. and for others. And I think that like seeing this happen so consistently, which is crazy to say, yeah. is like, I think it's just changed my whole mindset on life really, which is really deep. But you know, it's just, it's, it's weird that it's becoming, I don't want to say the norm, but mm -hmm. like the regular to having to report this on air. And it's so hard. I'm like, here we go again. Here's another one. Here, you know, it's like, and you know, we're, we're, our purpose is to serve the community. So of course we have to deliver this. And it's just, man, it's, it's probably one of the hardest things I have to do in my career. And I've literally had to get on the air and say that for everybody, you know, yeah. like, you know, another death and, and having to update everybody. I know for Nipsey's, that was, that was really, and I, obviously Kobe too. I just had people calling in from all over the world. Mm -hmm. You see how much of an impact these people had. And it's like, and still continue to have, I'm like, man, I got a lot of work to do too. It just makes you think about your life and, right. and what you're doing. Cause we're mad that we don't got 20 K on Instagram and certain amount of likes. And it's yeah. like, no, nah, you got to do way more. You got to yeah. be there for the people like they were. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you uh, on the sense of like impacting people. I remember when uh, I first heard about the Kobe news, I, I couldn't, obviously I, I couldn't believe it. And then right. my next thought was, what is the point of working so hard? And, and he was such a great father and a great husband and, 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 all everything that he did and it's it was all gone mm. um and there was a there was a couple of days where i was just bad and, and thinking like what's the point mm -hmm. you know what's the why why do i wake up and and, and work my ass off every single day mm -hmm. if it could just be taken away so quickly mm -hmm. but obviously as as time went um the anger went away and i just started to see just the the overall um you know perspective and 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 what Kobe brought to the world, yeah. um, happiness, motivation, inspiration. I mean, endless amount of, of, of pluses and, mm -hmm. and, and, and um, positives that, that Kobe brought to us and yeah. joy. Um, and those memories, you know, he's, he's, he's here forever. Yeah. Um, and now that's, that's, that's the, the mission is, is to, is to make an impact. Um, to, you know, even if, if I can make an impact half of what Kobe made you know um and i think even that that's that's such a a, a high um way place to put it but i mean i i think if if we put our uh, our attention into making an impact and just treating people the those people around us with love and care and and making a change and impact there i think we're we're um you know we'll, we'll be set we're i on think on the right track yeah and yeah. I, I think also I've learned from these passings that we're all here for uh, a, a short amount of time, um, and, and while we are here, let's let's embrace and, and enjoy everyone mm. that we do connect with every single day, yeah. and and let them know how much you appreciate them and how much you love them, and and hug your loved ones because you just never ever know. Yep. You know, I, I never want to leave a room mad at someone. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's what I've gained from, from these passings. And I, lastly, you know, uh, Juice World, you know, the Mac Millers, um, you know, these are horrible, 
accidents, but you know, we see these these artists um, in, in, in hip hop too, mm -hmm. mostly, um, you know, they're on, they're on the lean and, and on, on the prescribed medications and, mm -hmm. and they're overdosing. And a lot of these overdoses mm -hmm. are accidental. Right. And it's like, all right, when are we going to learn guys? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you, we see these, and, and I, I still see rappers, you know, I, I still doing it, still doing it's it. Like, and it's like, it's, it's horrible. It's, it's, it, it, it's uh, disappointing, and um, I just hope that there's change. I, I know we can't avoid all deaths, but mm -hmm. some are avoidable. Mm -hmm. um, and you know these these overdoses, these accidental overdoses. Um, I, I would I would love to see a lot less of them, and and to see a change in in our culture mm -hmm. where uh, drugs aren't seen as as a they're cool not thing to do glorified. Right. Right. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah. No more drugs. Period. Don't do drugs. <laughs> Don't do drugs, kids. Let's <laughs> hug you. each other and love each other. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching episode yes. nine off the air. I'm Ando Fresco. I'm Brianna.